How's it going, everyone? Today, we have Scott Zervinsky on with us today as our guest. Uh, Scott, a three-year pro, played in St. John's Ice Caps of the AHL and the Hamilton Bulldogs. Also spent some time in the ECHL. Uh, Scott also um, was part of um, the Vancouver Canucks and Pittsburgh Penguins development camps. Uh, spent four years at Quinnipiac and two years in the BCHL with the Vernon Vipers. Um, and now he's currently a financial planner with IG Wealth. Thanks a lot for coming on with us today. Oh, yeah, so, so Zerves, what, um, what are some experiences and, and uh, some things that you can share from your whole hockey journey uh, with these players, parents, and coaches? Um, a little bit of background. Um, um, I grew up in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Um, you know, growing up, I spent a lot of time on the outdoor rinks. Um, like my dad had a rink in my backyard. I was out there um, all day, every day, man. And I spent, uh, I spent, you know, pretty much, pretty much literally every day out there. And, and um, you know, when it came to like Bantam draft, you know, time, I was, I was small. I hadn't grown yet. Um, like right now, I'm about 6'2", probably about 225. Um, and at that point I was probably about five, five, a buck 50 soaking wet. Um, didn't talk to any teams. Um, I was playing defense. I've played defense my whole life or, or so far through my career. Um, and then, um, I actually started out my 15 year old year playing major double a, um, with the Saskatoon Flyers. Um, and I didn't really honestly think that I was going to be able to play hockey. I loved the game. I would have loved to keep going and then was, was hoping to, but I, you know, it just didn't really look too bright for me. Um, Sure enough, that year, um, I had some good buddies that played for the Saskatoon Contacts, which is a AAA uh, Saskatchewan midget team. And um, they had their coach come out and watch me that year. And, and um, that kind of led to me being, you know, end up being affiliated and end up playing a few games um, in the second half of the season. Um, going into my 16-year-old year, um, you know, I ended up making the, the Contacts AAA team um, as a D-man. I think I'm probably about the seventh D-man. Um, it was an interesting year, actually an amazing year, because we ended up winning the TELS Cup. Uh, we won the Max Tournament. Um, we had a bunch of guys that went on to play in the NHL, um, guys like uh, Luke Shen, Dryba. Um, you know, there was a bunch of, uh, a lot of good players, too, that went on to the dub and had really good careers and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, we had a successful year. I think maybe we lost three games that year. Um, I, I mean, you could probably, the best way to classify me on that team is probably a grocery stick. You know, I, I did a good job of separating the D and the forwards, and I didn't play a lot in the third periods. Um, I was just happy to be there, man. And, and you know what? That was kind of where it all kind of started for me. I just watched, learned, worked hard, uh, didn't complain, um, and stuck to it. And, and we had such a good year that, um, you know, going into the next season, everyone basically got opportunities, whether it's the WHL or Junior A. Um, guys were locking down scholarships, all that kind of stuff. And um, I actually ended up getting an opportunity to play with, the, like, the Peter Raiders and the Dub, and, I went to their camp and, and they offered me a spot as, as their seventh D-man, which goes to show you, you know, the team has success. I mean, even though I was barely playing, um, you know, throughout, throughout that first year uh, in Major AAA, I still got an opportunity just because of the team's success. Um, sure enough, I decided it wasn't for me. I didn't feel ready, kind of trusted my gut um, and went back. And I remember going into my, that would have been my 17-year-old year, and I was sitting down with our coaches with the contacts and, and they basically said, like, we're going we're gonna to move you up the forward this year. And, and I, you know, I remember, I, I can vividly remember the, the conversation. I kind of laughed. I was, like, just kind of caught off guard. But I said, hey, yeah, sure, let's, why not? You know, I mean, I, I just um, figured I'd just trust them. And, and sure enough, I went on that year, and I ended up leading the league in scoring. I think my first year I had four goals. And uh, the next, like, that 17-year-old year, I ended up uh, maybe 33. I think I ended up with, like, almost 70 points. Yeah. Um, so, so it really worked out for me, just kind of trusting the coaches and, and just going with it. And I think by the second half of that season, I started having uh, some NCAA schools come and look at me and, and the doors started just, you know, to open up for me out of the blue. So it was kind of interesting how things changed for me there. And um, I remember like NODAC or North Dakota came out and watched from like Minnesota Duluth, Minnesota State, and, and obviously like Vernon and the BCHL and the Nanaimo were a couple of teams that started talking to me and I ended up getting a fly down to Vernon and I actually had one book to the Nanaimo as well. Um, both basically the top of, of, you know, the interior is Vernon and then the, on the island or, uh, part of the BCHL league is, is the Nanaimo at that time. Anyway, um, I flew down to Vernon. Um, I think it was game six of, of the second round. 
um, of, of playoffs. They're playing Salmon Arm, which is like 25 minutes down the road. Um, there was about 3,500 people there, which was which which was a drastic change compared to what I was used to playing. You know, major AAA. Like we, our rink was called the Shro Dome, and you you were lucky to stuff you know 200 people in there. So. You know, I see that, and I actually ended up canceling my flying out in Nanaimo, and I committed to Vernon, and and um, you know, I was off to the races there. And, and I remember my first game the next year in Vernon. Um, I think it was, I think it was maybe my first or second game. I got a full ride offer from Alaska Anchorage and Alaska Fairbanks, um, and from there on, they just kept on coming. So, um, is a good example. Of my career, at least anyway, is is a good example that you know you never know when things can change. And I grew late. Um, I thought I was going to be done, but I ended up getting an opportunity. I made the most of it, and um, which led to you know me uh, committing to Quinnipiac University, which is a really good hockey program now. They're they've been in the top twenty um, D one for for several years now. Um, they're always kind of in the in the in the run for for you know getting into the tournament and stuff. And ended up being a two time captain there for my junior and senior year, uh, and then that led into a pro uh, a little bit of a pro career, uh, which ended up. Uh, kind of ending with an injury but um, you know I'm forever thankful for that opportunity you know like I learned a lot of stuff and, and it's really made me um, kind of who I am today so I'm forever grateful for those opportunities and I met a lot of good people on the way you know like you and I played together longer and and we still have a good relationship and there's just numbers I can you know I can lift guys off you know for days it's, it's hard to keep in touch with all of them because you build so many relationships you know.